Welcome back guys, my name is Brandon and in this week's episode we've got a fun project planned out. We're going to be doing some aluminum TIG welding and hopefully it goes a little bit better than last week's episode. Stick around. In last week's episode guys, we built a pooper scooper using some 8th inch aluminum plate. Well. The reason I say that that was somewhat of a debacle is because I spent a good part of that episode trying to figure out why my filler metal wouldn't work. Well, come to find out, I had actually inadvertently, by accident, picked up a piece of stainless steel TIG wire thinking that it was aluminum filler metal. And I spent probably longer than I wish to say on trying to figure out why I couldn't get the filler metal to work. I actually captured it on video as I was doing it. So if you wanna see that video, Click the link up above. It wasn't a complete waste of time. I did end up with a nice uh, project when I was done, but it took me a minute to get there. What we got here, guys, is this is just a little scrap leftover piece of aluminum. And I figured what I would do is make something out of this. So what I want to do is I want to close in the ends right here. And I want to be able to hang this off the side of my toolbox. So the reason for that is, is you see how I have all these like little containers right here all sitting in the top and it's not really overly organized. Well, if I make something that can hang off the side of my toolbox, I can actually put all these products in it and I may even add like a earth magnet to the back so that I could actually, you know, clip it to anything metallic. So in order to do that, I'm gonna have to put some sort of strip here and then space it out so that leaves a gap that I can like hook it over the toolbox and I have to also fill in this piece. So I guess that'll be the first thing we do is I'll take a measurement from here to here and then the height and we'll get cutting it. So I need to make this six by two and three quarters tall. So we're just gonna miss this little uh, defect right here. So we'll make a mark at two and three quarters. Another one here on this side. We'll try to maximize as much material as we can get out of this. And miraculously enough, this measures 12 inches wide. So all we gotta do is kinda like split it down the center and that's that. And so that I get a nice crisp line, I'm actually gonna put a straight edge on it and I'll scribe it. And now we'll make a mark at six. Okay, there. Then we'll have to create a little lip for the back side to hook over the toolbox, but once we cut these two pieces, then we'll do that. Now, because this is made of aluminum, you don't have to do anything special to cut it. You can actually cut it with just a regular carbide blade, and that's what we're gonna do. And to hold it down, I'm just attaching it to my fixture table, and if you wanna know how I built that, or these clamps, I'll have a link up above for you to check out. But this is super handy for doing all sorts of stuff in your workshop. Not even just welding, but just in general, all kinds of things that you need clamping. And this is all I'm using to cut it, guys. Just a standard cordless saw with a just a standard wood carbide blade. That's it. Nothing fancy. And I've got on my safety shorts. You want to make sure you got ear protection and eye protection because it's going to be loud, real loud. All right guys, I had my blade in backwards. I was actually cutting um, some plastic or like some mylar and you actually put your blade in backwards to cut it so it doesn't explode it. Well, yeah, the minute I sunk this into that aluminum, I realized that it was backwards. So you just put the blade on the way it normally would be to cut wood, that's it. So while I got this sitting here now, I might as well make the spacers and make the little piece that's going to go across the top to hang it. So I'll do that right now. So we'll use that piece maybe to hang it. No, we'll use that piece as the spacers. 
and we'll hang it from this. Now the next process I'm working on guys is I'm just taking off any burrs that I created from cutting it and I'm just using a flap disc designed for aluminum from Empire Abrasives and I'll have a link to all of this stuff that you see me using and more uh, any of the tools or whatever down in the description below. Now I'll just bring this over to my portable bandsaw stand and it'll just make it real easy to make this cut. For this I'm just using a Milwaukee uh, bandsaw and I set it up onto this table. I know I keep plugging videos but if you guys want to see how I built this uh, table and stand along with uh, the sizes and everything so that you guys can build it. I'll have a link up above and there'll be one down in the description as well. Got a little switch right here, just like a wall switch that turns it on. All right guys, I'm pretty much all set up right now and I'm just gonna go over because again, this is for like beginners and I am no way near an aluminum welding expert, but um, it's been a long time since I've welded aluminum. Like this would probably be like the third time in maybe like 15 years that I've done it. And this is like the third time ever on an inverter welder. So all my aluminum experience is on transformer based. So, but anyways, um, this is kind of the new age of the future is inverter welders and I looked long and hard before uh, pulling the trigger on one and yes welder is pretty much um, out there everywhere now um, this thing can be used with uh, CNC cutters and and everything else so a lot of you guys have commented in the past like you guys are real happy with your prime weld and that was another consideration that I made the only reason um, I didn't pull the trigger on a prime weld is because I wanted something uh, that was rated for 250 amps and I think this is one of the few this is one of the few that are rated at 250 amps so let me show you everything that's set up uh, again this is an AC DC uh, TIG welder and it'll also do uh, stick welding as you can see it does aluminum stainless carbon steel and yes, this is an imported welder, but they're also based out of the United States. I mean, w what things are nowadays that don't have imported components in them? I mean, every car on the road has components from, you know, somewhere overseas. So this is a 240 volt unit. And so I've got it plugged into 240. If you guys want to see how to hook up a 240 volt uh, receptacle in your workshop, I'll have a link up above. I've gone over that in some past videos, which is really handy. So the only drawback for this is that it's not the type of normal inverter where it's 110, 220. This strictly is a 220 or 240 volt welder. It has to be plugged into that for this to work. So if you don't have 110 power in your workshop, this is not gonna work, so. But if you are looking into putting 220 power and installing a welder outlet, it's actually pretty simple. Um, and again, like I said, I'll have a link up above, so. To weld aluminum, you gotta be hooked up to straight argon, uh, which I am right now. So I've got my bottle connected up. Uh, a lot of times you guys ask me about where do I get, um, you know, where do I get my gas or, you know, should I buy my tank? Should I rent my tanks, whatnot? Um, I'm not sponsored by those guys. I get all my uh, gas through Matheson. They're all around the country and I have, they, they make like a one year contract and a five year contract. It's been a while since I remember the prices, but um, for me, I do a five year thing and literally they just give me the largest size bottle that I can, that I want. Um, it doesn't change that contract price and I just pay for whatever gas it takes to fill that cylinder. And the bigger the cylinder that you get, uh, the cheaper the gas is by like the cubic foot. So, so if you've got like one of those little tiny 20 tanks that, that are like real, you know, a real short one, the price to fill that is going to be not a lot of difference between the price to fill this massive one because they get more money for whatever reason to fill a smaller tank per cubic foot than they do to fill a bigger tank. So if that's the route you go, get the biggest tank that you can physically manhandle. So all right, so we got the bottle on, we stood off to the side. Now I gotta set the gauge, and I'm gonna set the gauge for around 15 CFH, and this is the part that I kinda don't like about this welder, is I actually gotta have, I gotta activate the foot pedal 
to engage the solenoid in the welder so I can actually set the CFH. So I, I wish that was a little different. That's something I'm not overly keen about, but uh, so let me turn on the welder. Okay, make sure. Yeah, the face plate's on. Okay, so now what I'll do, make sure my torch isn't hitting anything. Okay, so now I'm going to depress the foot pedal, and while I depress the foot pedal, I'll set my CFH. Alright, so I'm about 15 right there. Okay, so there. You can see it'll just drop down eventually there we go okay so yeah that's kind of the only drawback guys with this welder is that if your tanks aren't close to your pedal uh, you got to initiate the pedal to do it so okay we're all set there and when you weld in aluminum your working lead or your earth or ground whatever you want to call it that goes into positive and then that clamps to your you know your fixture table or whatever you're using. And then this lead that you see right here, uh, this is, if I was not using a foot pedal, I'd actually just, this is my foot pedal connection right here. It just literally goes down the wire to my foot pedal that controls the amperage. But if I did not want to use a foot pedal, I can take this connector out, plug this in place of it, and then you actually have a trigger torch here but then it's just full amperage you're not gonna it's whatever you set on the dial versus like the pedal working like a gas pedal on a car you know however much you give it is how much you get based on whatever your maximum is we'll talk about that here in a minute so and for tungsten i'm using 330 seconds uh, this is what they call laser some of the other videos i was using blue demon multi-mix tungsten and i really like that too so um, but we'll give this a try and see how this works. Now, when you pull your tungstens out of the package, you're gonna have a colored end, which designates um, what the material actually is for tungsten. Uh, so you wanna keep your colored end, and both ends will be blunt, and that's the end you'll, you'll sharpen, okay? So this is how I do it. I take my colored end, you can kinda see it's kinda worn off from, you can kind of see how it's worn off from sliding it in and out of the collet. But what I do is I put just a little bit of a taper on the end of that colored end. That way you can slide it in and out of your collet on the torch body real easy without like fetching it up. Because when you leave it blunt, it kind of fetches up. So I just put just a chamfered edge on it. It makes it going in and out of the, the torch body a lot easier. And now we got to sharpen it up and I'll show you how I do that. I'm going to start out with a brand new piece of tungsten. That way I can just show you right from the start how I do it. Okay, so I grab the, I grab it, leave the painted end away from me and I just put a chamfer on it just using my fingers real, real easy here. That's it guys, right there. Just a little bit of a chamfer, that's all it takes. Now I chuck, chuck it in to the drill and we'll sharpen it real good. And tighten it up and hold it perpendicular so that the scratch lines are going this way. You don't want them going spiral if you do it on the side of the wheel, you wanna do it on the front of the wheel. But you gotta be careful doing it this way because the angle, the way the blade is spinning, the way the wheel is spinning on this can actually like chunk the tungsten out. So you just, you got to be careful on how you do it, that's all. And there it is, see that? Now just remove this from your drill. And because you chamfered that end, it should fit really easy inside your torch body. And there it is, right there. Keeping my stick out pretty short, or as short as I dare. And, uh, can you see that? Yeah, that's it right there. So let's go over some of the settings, guys. I, I know it's kind of like blinding probably with this LED uh, right here. 
but um, I'll just explain to you what's going on as I cycle through the cycle through the features. So right now we're on AC TIG, and then you can do AC pulse, DC TIG, DC pulse, and stick welding. That's what those settings are there. 2T uh, basically is like you pull the trigger and you hold it and it will continue to weld and when you let off it stops. 4T would be like if you were setting it up on like a CNC machine. So you activate the trigger and let off and it stays lit. Hit it again and it turns off. So that's kind of like cruise control on a car. So and let's see so we're in 2t mode i'm at 125 amps because that's generally what you would weld eighth inch material at so i've got that set at 125 that's maximum at the pedal so when i have the pedal floored i'll get 125 amps it can be whatever i set it for so um, again this goes up to 250 amps uh, when it's in ac uh, tig mode and when you switch it over to stick it goes to 200 so it's 200 amps on stick 250 on ac let's see what it does on dc tig yeah 250 on dc tig as well that's what i thought so all right so let's set it to 125 on amperage and that's uh the hertz that we're welding at so old transformer machines used to be at 60 uh, i'm welding at 100 the lower the number the wider the bead the higher the number typically the thinner the bead and that's the ac balance i've got that set on 60 so raising that number above 60 will uh, tend to ball your tungsten more and lowering it will keep it pointed and then the slope down, so that's the amperage downwards. I've got none. I'm using it on the pedal. That's the stop amperage. So when I let off, it goes down to 25 amps on the pedal. And I've got six seconds of gas flow after the arc stops. 2.4 is my tungsten diameter. That's in uh, millimeters. And seven tenths of a second. Uh, post flow. So that's my argon gas running just before the arc initiates. And start amp, so it starts at 25 and ramps up whatever I've set on my pedal. And there it is. So those are the settings. Now all we gotta do is clean the metal and get welded. And when you work with aluminum guys, you gotta have everything super, super, super clean. So that's the key. You wanna get a good weld, uh, clean it look and so I got to make sure that my even my tables clean because if I'm gonna set my parts on my table I want my table clean too one of my viewers mentioned about a uh, acetone sprayer and uh, I looked into it and I can't remember which viewer it was hopefully you chime in there and uh, I reached out to the company to find out some more information, but yeah, I'm probably going to be getting one because it looks super slick. You basically fill the sprayer with acetone, and then you put like 100 PSI of air in the tank, and it just gives like a quick shot of acetone so you're not wasting it because a lot of the acetone that I'm using right now is just going on the rag and it's being wasted versus like going on the part and doing its cleaning action. So this piece here, got obviously these are the sides. This piece here is going to be a spacer that's going to sit on the back of that. And then this is going to weld onto it. So see how it creates that gap right there? That gap will hook over the lip of my toolbox. So, make sense? Almost done, guys. And then I'll show you what I'm using for filler metal. And uh, we won't be using uh, 304 stainless or whatever it was I was using on the last episode trying to figure out why it wouldn't weld. What a horror show that was, guys. My God, it was terrible. I had two pieces. I had a piece of aluminum on the table, apparently, and I grabbed another piece of rod thinking it was aluminum, and it actually ended up being stainless steel. And I tried, so one minute I'd get a good weld if I picked up the right piece of uh, filler metal, then the next minute, I'd get a horrible weld and I couldn't figure out why from second to second my weld was changing so drastically for the worse and uh, 
it actually caught my expression on camera as I realized that I was welding with uh, stainless steel material. So again, I'll have that link up above to that video. It was pretty interesting. So it wasn't a complete waste of a video. It was actually a pretty good video, I think. So got a lot of positive comments on it. I'm real happy with this Yes Welder, guys. I haven't, uh, I haven't had it for an overly long time, but like I said in my uh, last video about it, I did a lot of research and um, I really like it. I got a lot of ribbing from a, a lot of you about, uh, just like I do with anything that, from imported. I get it. You know what I mean? You want to buy USA, keep it USA. But kind of funny, someone like last week gave me a bunch of grief. Um, you know, like I said, they get spun up about these imported welders. Like, well, I'm a professional welder and, you know, us professional welders. Got, well, you know, hey, just... Just because I buy imports doesn't mean that I don't like quality too. So, I mean, if you guys are familiar with Fronius, um, this is like probably the top of the line stuff that you can buy. So, but you know, again, it's hard to, I don't do a lot of aluminum, so it doesn't make a lot of sense for me to go out and spend $5,000 on an aluminum welder when a $300 unit will do what I need to do. So it's just dollars and cents. You know what I mean? I spend my money where it's important and where it's needed. And um, I, you know, need quality equipment to do the jobs that I do, and this equipment does it for me. I don't do, if I did more aluminum, maybe I'd get something a little bit better, but um, this does everything and more that I'll ever need, so. You know, we also live in a real world where we try to, you know, we all got bills to pay and budgets and everything else, and, you know, yeah, it'd be nice. We'd all love to go out and have a, you know, $5,000 welder in our shop, but, you know, for a lot of you guys that just do this as a hobby, that would make zero sense, you know. If you held out to till the time you had $5,000, other things are more important, you know, like putting food on your table and taking care of kids and, you know, all the other expenses that go with life. So, so far this seems to be a really good welder and it's got an awesome warranty too, so. But time will tell, like anything, you know. If you guys are, like I said, interested on knowing more about that welder, I'll have some some links down below. Oh, while I got you guys here, I know probably some of you are going to ask, like, what's up with the dirt bike? Well, you guys um, have voiced your concerns that you don't really want to see dirt bike content on this channel, or at least the majority of you guys don't. Some of you do, I know that some of you guys are into it, but um, for those that aren't, I'm trying to keep this channel just solely dedicated to welding. If you guys are interested in like motorcycle builds and maintenance and stuff like that, go check out my other channel that's Motivated 207. I'll have a link to that and it's a complete uh, whole rebuild series that I'm doing on this bike. I picked this up for like 400 bucks and uh, totally going through it uh, and rebuilding it. It's got all new a lot of new stuff but again it's kind of still kind of like budget friendly and probably maybe overall including the purchase maybe about 800 bucks into that but yeah go check it out if you're interested oh let's see all right i'm already super uncomfortable so this, this is actually too high um i need to lower my, my table down a little bit but i'm gonna get a little lazy here today and hope for the best try to stick this thing together all right, here we go. I'm gonna go up a little bit on the amperage. I kinda wanna make my tack so I'm not spending quite as long on my tack, so I'll give it a little more amperage and spend less time heating it. You can see it's already balled the tungsten already, so. Which isn't a bad thing, I don't mind that. Now this pedal, guys, um, I'm having a real hard time getting used to it as far as like letting out. Um, it seems like it, it lets out maybe like not as smooth as I would like it to, uh, it, but I'm sure the pedal's fine. It's just, I'm, it, it's big. It's got a lot of travel. Um, my Fronius pedal is like small. It, it has very, very little travel. So when you move it a little bit, it 
has a lot of adjustment to it, which I like. That's how I like it to be. Um, this has a lot of travel. So like for me to like let out of it, I have to move my foot, a big range of motion, which is just different for me. Uh, I'm trying to get used to it. I've actually tried, I've actually thought about trying to uh, modify the connections on this machine, making an adapter so that I can literally just plug my Fronius uh, welder uh, pedal into this machine. And I'm probably going to do that. So uh, that'll be in an upcoming episode. So for you guys that have maybe this machine and you want to use a different pedal, we'll talk about the pinouts on it on and how to you can wire it up and make like an adapter plug without you know cutting up your your cords or anything like that we'll just make an adapter one that plugs into the machine and then the other one that the pedal plugs into so that might be handy for some of you guys all right so here's my second tack right here that came out a little bit better um the first tack has some black on it so probably i should have run this on a piece of scrap material which is what uh, i generally do uh but uh, this just to burn off like any oxidization that's on the tungsten and now we're going to kind of just go around and tack up this other side here and you can see how this doesn't fit so we're going to have to um, push down this and get that to line up. Right now this lines up really good here so let's, uh, let's throw a tack on that. This obviously has to get closed up a little bit more, so I'll try to put a little bit of a bend in it. Probably just end up clamping it down to the table and doing it that way. Again, this is just another uh, handy tool to have when you're doing fabrication work. And we'll just, boom, push this right into position. Probably going to need a little bit more than a small tack on that to hold it. And you can see what I did there, guys, is I actually held it there for a little bit longer and I actually traveled a little bit with it. So hopefully that'll uh, help keep that into place without it cracking. Yep, there we go. Good. This has a little uh, snip taken out of it. That's just part of the scrap metal, so whatever. It is what it is. Maybe we'll, we'll put that towards the bottom, I guess. liking it so far I know you you really can't see too closely what I'm doing and I don't really have the capability of doing art shots but um, in time we'll, we'll get there I'm gonna show you what my tungsten looks like it's still balled up it hasn't changed any Jody on welding tips and tricks uses that uh, TIG finger, so I gotta pick up something like that, especially if I'm gonna be doing more of this aluminum stuff. Looks a little more professional than stuffing an old <laughs> glove on there, but it'll work, it'll get me by. All right, here we go.
and there it is guys so I'm not gonna do anything about these little holes here or anything like that it just it is what it is but uh, yeah I'm not gonna worry about that and let's see I'm gonna squeeze this down I've got a pair of ice grips on this little flange to pull it over and I'm just gonna hold that like that and put it back in it. Check that out guys. Pretty happy how it's coming up so far, but again, that's only tax that we got on it. So, so now we're gonna put this little uh, feller on there. We don't have to do much here guys. Pretty much all we're gonna do is put a tack on each end and maybe like one in the middle. And we're just gonna hold it back just a little bit from this lip. And then we'll set this on top and then we'll fill right down through the center of that joint. So then that'll create that space that we need to fit it over the toolbox. Projects like these are good little uh, practice projects. You know what I mean? Because you're not, you're not doing anything structural. It's, you know, if it turns south on you and it goes bad what, what's the worst thing's gonna happen you're gonna have a broken weld you know what I mean maybe some embarrassment but yeah so far so good oh yeah look at that guys that's nice, look at that. See, so now I can store all these things here that are taking up tool space. I can put them all down in this and I still have underneath, you know? Yeah, <laughs> nice. So now I'm just gonna clean everything down. I got a dedicated brush. I just marked it aluminum, it's a stainless steel brush. So now we'll just clean it all up. We'll wire brush it down and then we'll clean it again with acetone then we'll start welding. Another thing we can do guys is uh, like round off some of the edges and round them off here. We'll do that when we're all done. And this is how I made the mistake last week guys. You see how I have this little piece of um, filler metal here? Well this is easy to see because it's like copper coated so it's ER70S2 but um, I also have 308L in there and a bunch of different stainless and obviously if you're not welding aluminum a lot then the, you're not feeling the lightness of it. So I should have known better, but I didn't. And, uh, but anyways, yeah. So I had a piece of aluminum and I had a piece of stainless TIG wire that was used down in that little area. And I just grabbed it thinking I was grabbing uh, aluminum. It was actually stainless, but that's what we're using, guys. I'm using ER4043 and it's 3.30 seconds. I'm gonna clean everything down one last time. Make sure everything is spotless. Again, that's the key to good aluminum welds, cleanliness. <laughs> I kind of want to build another one now, guys. <laughs> I, I'm just seeing all kinds of like uses for stuff like this. So like I've got my um, annular cutter set and cutting oil back there, a bunch of different hole saws um different bits and the chuck and more cutting oil and more bits and little adapter pieces instead of having it like scattered all over that table i could just have them kind of like in a tray all nice and neat and organized in one place so when i'm done with something i just throw it in there so maybe i'll build another one at some point in time it's uh pretty handy yeah i'm liking it 
Yeah. All right, guys. Now remember what I said. I'm just practicing, right? I need the practice. It's been a long time since I've kick welded aluminum. Not bad. It started getting away from me a little bit at the end and it got a little too hot. So I'm going to try to fill that back in. It's far from perfect guys, but it's okay. And I'm okay with that because again, in order to get good at something, you gotta keep doing it. So I'm doing it. All right guys, and here it is. And if you don't look too close, it actually doesn't look too bad. It's one way of putting it, right? If you don't look too close, it doesn't come, it didn't come out that bad. Oh yeah, I like that. That is going to work nice. So now I can just start putting in some of my things that take up space there and get this organized. And stuff like this, like overflow stuff, like stuff I have extra of, that can go like in the back. Yeah, and that just freed up a bunch of room in my toolbox. And I could probably put like little dividers in here, like little uh, containers to hold this smaller stuff. But yeah, that's pretty slick. So overall, I think it came out pretty good. It's not perfect. Um, there's a little spot right here that I just didn't bother to fill in because I was afraid I was going to blow it out. And I was having a heck of a time on this backside uh, getting that welded. So I just kind of like filled it with a bunch of weld and ground it. Got a little low spot here, but I'm kind of done with it, so. Uh, but anyways, let me show you, too, another thing for my toolbox for organization. Um, what I've got here is I've just taken a magnet strip and screwed it to the lid of my toolbox, and I keep the lid open, so, like, it just holds them there. So, like, things don't fall off. So you can set all kinds of, like, cans of whatever up there and they just magnetically stay there they don't have to you don't have to worry about them like falling off into your into your toolbox so yeah pretty slick that's gonna add a lot more space now i got room underneath and i got now i got more room on top for tools so yeah worked out pretty slick and you know something guys like i said in the video although it didn't come out perfect you got to practice just like anything in life. The more you do it, the better you get at it. And it had been a long time for me since I had uh, TIG welded aluminum. And this is only the third time in my entire life doing it on an inverter machine. So I'm sure the more that I do it, the better I'll get. Until next week, guys, I will see you then. New videos every Friday. Please like, 
comment, and subscribe. Until next Friday, guys, I will see you then. Take care, stay safe, see ya. And if you're interested on motorcycle builds and maintenance stuff, go check out my other YouTube channel, Motivated207. See you next week, guys. Take care. Bye.